Migration has defined our societies for centuries, enriched our cultures and shaped our lives. So said President von der Leyen in her State of the Union speech. And I think this is very crucial. Migration is normal. Migration has always been here. Migration will always be here. Sometimes in the debate, we try to make a link between migration and crisis. But most of the migrants that come to European Union come here legally. Last year, 2.4 million migrants got a resident permit in the European Union. Most of them because they fell in love with the EU citizen and they marry. But also for other family reasons, to work here, to study here, and also some that got asylum. Last year, one, about around one million left the European Union. And that means that we have an extra one, one and a half million people coming to the European Union every year. And we need them because we're an aging society. And many of those are being European citizens. Last year, almost 700,000 new European citizens, citizenship were, were issued. So this works quite well, I should say, and we need migration. But on the headlines in the news is of always what's not work so well. And that is the situation with the irregular arrivals. Last year, we had 140,000 irregular arrivals to the European Union. And this is really what we are addressing now in our proposal to manage in a much better way. And I think that uh, when we are discussing the proposal that we now have put on the table, uh, I understand that a lot of people still are in the mood of the situation in 2015. But we are not there. In 2015, we had 1.8 million irregular arrivals to the European Union, and almost all of them were refugees. As I said last year, 140,000 irregular, uh, irregular arrivals, and a minority of them, one third, were refugees. The others are not refugees, and they will have a negative asylum decision and a return decision. And that shows also what we need to, to address better, is the effectiveness on returns and readmission to the countries of origin. What we need to do is to move away with from few, we need fewer irregular arrivals and instead have more regular arrivals. That's why we have to focus on legal pathways, both for migrants to come to contribute to our economy and for refugees that need international protection. And I'm very proud that the European Union are doing so much when it comes to resettlement of um, refugees. And we are in also in our proposal uh, having, having a proposal to step up on that with the new community-sponsored resettlement. To be able to have fewer irregular arrivals, we need to fight the human smugglers. These are well-organized criminal networks that are earning a lot of money by smuggling people into the European Union. And at the same time, a lot of people have to risk their lives. This is not how it should be done. And that's, as Marguerite has just pointed out, the importance of working very close together with third countries, with our partner countries, to fight the smuggling together. We also need to focus more on returns. And that's, you can see in our package today, there's a lot of new initiatives when it comes to be more effective on returns. And I'm coming back to that. One of the importance is, of course, to have good readmission agreements with third countries, and that's going to be a prioritizing. That's going to be prioritized. I will let go through uh, how we should address the problems and the challenges that we are facing. And as Marguerite rightly said, we had to have a lot of dialogues with member states, with parliament, with other stakeholders, to find, to, to listen, where are the shortcomings without a common European migration and asylum system. And these we are addressing in our, pro our proposal to be able to manage migration better. Of course, it's fundamental to uh, defend the right to apply for asylum. And that means that it's also fundamental how we protect our borders. That we do it in a way that is in compliance with the Geneva Convention and the right to apply for asylum. We will propose a new monitoring uh, and independent monitoring mechanism for all member states to implement 
and in guidance with the European Agency for Fundamental Rights to make sure that they are not being pushed back at the borders. When an irregular arrival comes to the European Union, there will be a mandatory screening process. This will take maximum five days. There you will do the registration, of course, into the Eurodac, and in Eurodac we will have much more information with our new proposal than in the current one. You can find out also whether this person has been in Europe before, for example, and already have a decision, maybe. There will also be uh, security checks, health checks, and a decision on which country is responsible for this application and which kind of procedure should this uh, person go through. If this uh, asylum applicants have a connection to another member state, state, like having a sibling there, have been working there, have studying there, then the other member state is responsible for the application and to process that. If the person is coming from a country with a very low recognition rate, under 20%, and it's not a family with small children, it's not an unaccompanied minor, it's not a person with medical needs, then this person should go to a border procedure. And this border procedure has the same rights for the person to have his or her application processed in a proper and fair way. But it has to be done very quickly. And I think that many of those will have a negative decision, but not all of them. Some will have a positive, and then, of course, they have the asylum in the country. Why do we do this? We do this because it would make it easier for voluntary returns. I think when a person has been living in a country for years, having relations, falling in love, then it's much more difficult, both for the individual and for the authorities, to do the return to the country of origin. It's important that we can have this, this, this decision of returns very quickly, in 12 weeks, and then also be able to do the returns. This is also an important message, that you will be returned if you are coming to the European Union and do not have the right to stay. And I think this is what the European citizens ask from us. They, I think they say, well, we are ready to welcome those in need of international protection. We are ready to welcome those that have the legal right to work or study in our union. But those do not have the legal right to stay. They have to go back. And this is what we are really focusing on in our proposal. If, uh, as Mar Margrethe said, it's also important that we have a solidarity mechanism. Of course, all member states have to deal with migration because migration is a normal thing. But there could be a situation where the migration pressure is high or risk of being high. And then there is a possibility to activate the solidarity mechanism. And as President von der Leyen just said uh, a few uh, minutes ago, uh, solidarity is not optional. Everybody has to contribute to the solidarity. But there are some possibilities to choose in what way to show your solidarity. The two main th ways to show solidarity is either via relocation of those probably in need of international protection or with a new return sponsorship where member states are helping each other to actually do the returns of those not eligible to stay and make sure that they will be reintegrated in their country of origin. This, uh, re this solidarity mechanism is, will also work for search and rescue cases. Search and rescue is a responsibility for uh, the, the member states or the coastal states, of course. And saving lives is, of course, always essential and always our obligation. But we must also make sure that when persons that have been saved at, at uh, search and rescued and saved at sea are being disembarked in the European Union. They are being disembarked in the European Union, not only in a member state. And that's why we need this solidarity, showing that also other member states must help with uh, the relocation of people that are being disembarked uh, through search and rescue or in other ways supporting the member state where they are being uh, disembarked. I will end with what's also important here, is that we 
should have more predictability. And I think today in college, uh, one of our colleagues uh, tell, told the story of 13 unaccompanied minors coming to her uh, country, being relocated from Lesbos and being welcomed. And I think there is so, such a huge difference when you have the names of those coming, when you know what flight they are coming with. It's so much easier for a country to welcome these and to have a swift integration. It's the unpredictability, it's much more difficult to deal with. And this is our aim, to have more of a Europeanized system where we help each other to have a more predictability in the system so that we should not be, uh, uh, we should not be surprised, so we can deal with the situation before they become a crisis. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Um, Yes, the Vice President wishes to add something. Dana, I, if you give me the floor before the question, simply to say that I, I apologize because the film Back to the Future is a film by Zemeckis, <laughs> not, not by Spielberg, as I said. So, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. On Hollywood, I'm not that strong. 